Okay, so Parshas Shmini. Parshas Shmini. So that's a lot of Parshas on the Migdash. Truma, Tetzav, Kitisa, Vayakov, Bechudei, Vayikra, Tzav, Shmini. That's a lot of Parshas. A lot of Parshas on the uh, Migdash. And one of the saddest parts of the whole Torah. I think everyone would agree. I think everyone would agree. One of the saddest parts of the whole Torah is which event? Sons of Aaron. Wow, wow, wow. You don't get sadder than that. You don't get sadder than that. Even Yom HaShmini, the height. Even Yom HaShmini, Karam Moshe Laron of Anav Zagnei Yisrael. What's the Yom HaShmini? Mishmini L'Miluim, Rosh Chodesh Nisan. Now, when's Rosh Chodesh Nisan? That's it, it's coming up in a few days. Nisan is coming up in a few days for Rosh Chodesh. Nisan Shehukam HaMishkan Bo Bayom. Okay, that was the uh, Mishkan was set up on that day. So the Sifzik Rabbim writes, Sheyom Rishon Shemilim Hayab Besvim Ushlosha, the 23rd of Adar. Memel Yom Hashmini, the eighth day of that process, started on the 23rd of Adar. This is now, this week. What are we into now? 25th, 26th, or 7th of Adar, the end of Adar. So that's when the Mishkan was set up, back in Moshe's times. And then eight days into that, worked out to be Rosh Chodesh Nisan. That's by Yiva Yom Hashmini. So, Yiva Yom Hashmini, Karam Moshe, the Lord of the Israel, Yom Hashmini, Egeb and Makai, told him about the Korbanos, Ku Sirizim, he went through all the details. Everything is going so, so nicely with all the details of what to do. Shane, he did the Korban Mincha and all the details. Then they did uh, the Brach of Hino Am. Hashem should bless. You, Klai Yisrael, that Hashem, the Shechina should be among everything that we do. So we're going strong. Rishon, Shani, now into Shlishi. The Eish, miraculously, a fire came and ate up the Korban and then disaster. And the disaster, of course, is not the Vanaviyu. Wow, we they brought a Corbin that they weren't supposed to bring, that they weren't commanded to bring. Wow, two psukim early, God's Aish came miraculously, ate up the Corbinot, a great sign of God's providence. Two psukim later, the Aish came and killed them. Wow, wow. So what what would they do wrong? Rashi says there's endless mafash on what they did wrong. Rashi says, Rashi says in Pasuk Beis, Wow, they passed in the in front of Moshe. That was what they did wrong. Wow. You think, okay, that's bad, but they die over that? Well, apparently we're trying to have the system of Psakalach and Din, and if somehow they did that, they could really challenge the whole Hierarchy of Psak Din. Okay, that's one shot. Rabbi Shmuel Omer, Shuye Yai Nech Zul Migdash. Wow. Shuye Tipsy. They drank a little bit. And that was the problem. Te Desh Achamit Tatan. How does he know that? Because right after they died, right after they died, what does it say? What are the next Psukim? Yain Vesech Ateshta. When you go serve in the Migdash, no drinking. So why do I say that now? Oh, because they just drank, and that was a problem. So this is a mafarshim on what they did wrong, and there's dozens and dozens of mafarshim. But we should remember to look at the pshat of the pasuk. What's the pshat of the pasuk? They put ish in the kli, you know, the 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 fire. By they put the spices on. By Akriva, they brought it to Hashem. Eish Zara Ashalotzi Votam. Eish Zara, a foreign fire that God did not want. Command them. Okay. 
Uchlos. Und das Sivu von der Aron, da war wir gewarm macht die Tee, der ist doch der Klief in der Mitte, wenn wir haben, wo wir haben, es hat put fire in it. We shaviu a laktos, they put katoris on it. We karivu katamashim eshatan nukhreta. What's nukhreta? Nukhri. What's nukhri? Something foreign. Okay, we can be referred to a gentle, foreign from Judaism. Or necha, foreign to the commandment here. The lo fakidli aton, that they were not commanded to bring. That's a simple shot. Everything else is a drasha. And more of analysis. And Rashi and the Gemara all bring down different commentaries. But the simple pshat, which we can never forget, is they brought something that was a zara. Why? Why was it a foreign fire? Shalot, yeah. Siva, they weren't commanded. Simple as that. Okay. Now, if we would take a look, if we would take a look at Nadav and Avihu and take a look at their faces, as they're bringing the Ketorah into the Migdash on the 1st of Nisan, seven days after Kamata Mishkan, and thinking back the history of the Jews, hundreds of years in slavery, a year of challenge in the Mitzrayim, we got out in Nisan a year ago. We've had a few bumps in the Midbar. We've had our ups and downs. We have the Migdash. God is shining his fire upon us, showing his hashkacha with us. If you look at our Nadav and Avihu's face, what do you think we'd be seeing? Glowing. Total connection with whom? No question. They'd be flying. If I weren't walking, they'd probably flying. And I little doubt that they were totally connected. Totally connected to Hashem. Totally. And it was an amazing spiritual moment for them. And if anyone saw them doing it, they were like, wow, wow. And this is the height of heights here. And with all their spirituality and all of their unbelievable goodwill and desire to cl get close to God, they forgot one minor detail. The way to get close to Hashem is through the mitzvahs that he commanded, not that we intuit. Or feel. We have nine million, nine billion, eight billion people. I haven't counted lately, but a lot of people in the world, and many of them want to get close to Hashem. Many do. There's two ways for a Jew. The way to get close to Hashem is how <laughs> six hundred thirteen mitzvos, and for the Gentile, seven mitzvos, and and he or she could do more. There's a whole system of mitzvos, and according to the Rambam, a Gentile that goes through the seven mitzvos properly. He gets or she gets what? Olam Haba. So there's a derech. There's a beautiful derech to get close to Hashem. The 7 and the 613. And you want to start bringing other stuff in, even with all the kavanos. It's dangerous. And they were made an example. They made an example was made out of them. And that was it. Very, very tragic. Very tragic. So that's the clear message of the shot of the Pasuk. Before you get into they pass in front of Moshe, they draw whatever, that's that's details and important details. But the pshat is you can't go ahead at the height of spirituality, watch out that you don't let your spirituality take control. Because it could be lethal. So I think that's the pshat, right? So now there's a danger to the pshat I just said. There's a danger. So you're going to go ahead and we got to be wary from that spirituality taking over. Yes? Very good. So everyone knows I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, a Harabayit Meshugana. And uh, I call it Harabayit faithful, but people have other terms for me. <laughs> I have a very close friend. He says it in jest. My, my, it's so nice to see you. Even though you're high of Kares, you're still alive. Oh, it's great to see you. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> yeah. he is a good friend. He is happy. He truly is. I used to ask my house all, every day. I used to, very often, we're good friends. He has a different opinion, then we can joke about it. That's fine. Don't worry. I tell him one day he's going to be thanking me. <laughs>
for trailblazing the path to the Migdash. And then everyone's going to see and have clarity that the Temple Mount Faithful, we had the right approach. But till then, don't keep joking with me. Anyways, so you're right. So maybe uh, we're so excited at this. And then I talk about in Corbanos, but there's a Dera. 100%. There is a Dera. And the Dera is not in the Shulchan Aruch. Shulchan Aruch doesn't talk about the halachas of Corbanos. But if you open up to Perik Vav, chapter six, in the Rambam Sefer Avoda, he writes, even without a Migdash, you could bring Korbanos. You just need a Mizbeach. Perik Vav, he doesn't even write that you need a Mizbeach. But early on, he indicates that you can't have a Korban without a Mizbeach. So fine. So, well, right in the place where the right in that place exactly and uh those of us who go up are quite convinced exactly what the place is okay there's even a little gazebo there to my cousins and it's right there where the mistake is uh, and that's it that's what we're gonna do yeah, you know, Paraduma, Ariel, the founder of the temple, said his son is one of the world experts in Paraduma, and we have some. It's going to happen one way or another. Personally, I don't think it's going to happen the way everyone thinks. The Migdash flying down Shemayim, and the whole world together in unity, bringing Korbanos again. It's not going to be that way, in my opinion. I hope I'm wrong. I think it's going to happen is a few of us crazy. Somehow, Bibi's going to let us bring a Korban. He's going to say, listen, uh, the whole world's against me. Everyone's against me. Uh, I need help. I need help. Go ahead. I give you permission. Bring the korban. And we're going to have a mezbeach, have a korban. The animal rights people are going to scream at us. Half of the rabbis are going to scream at us. The whole world is going to certainly scream at us. It's going to happen that way. And eventually we'll get the migdash back. I hope I'm wrong. And I hope to, today the migdash flies down for mind and the whole world is at peace and everything is great. But I, I don't think it's going to happen that way. Rarely do things happen in, the, in that fantastic kind of way. It happens this way. My guess is that way. I'm putting my doll, top dollar on that. Anyways, so you're right, there's a derech. And all my excitement about the Harabai is it's only with, you know, years of researching that I'm convinced it's the right thing to do. And only after understanding that even the desire to bring a Corbin is, of course, the Rambam, Perk, Bob, and Helpless Base of Achim. Right? It's all with sources. It's, and if anything just coming from here, then I'm in trouble. I'm following that Davina Vios path. Sure. Sure. Yes. Sure. Of course. King David, although he's not allowed to build the temple, very good. That's right. So he wasn't allowed to build, but we had Corbanos in the Mishkan then. Very good. And he bought the place. And he bought the place of the, he bought the place from Aravna. Exactly. He did whatever he could. So here's the danger of what I'm saying. There's a big danger. The danger is, so you go ahead and you can't have spirituality come from here. Of course, it could result in a Nadavan Aviyu. It has to be based on sources. So here, God did not say to bring the korban. You can't bring the korban. Unless God said, bring a korban, or yeah, I could bring an optional korban based on your feelings. And then that's fine. But God didn't say that. So they were killed. They paid the ultimate price. But, so people could say, wow, 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 we have to go to the other extreme and be very wary of the spiritual part of us because look what it did. And the answer is no, it's not true. The spirituality, the emotions, the feelings of Vekas and Hashem are very, very important. It's only a question of the order. Because you will find some people that, you know, are cold. Everything is mechanical, following halacha to the T, and there's just not a lot going on there. The emotional, that spiritual connection. But everything is to the, every I is dotted, every T is crossed. There's not one halacha they're not perfect about. But it's cold. Okay, there's even a term, and I don't like oh, using the term, right? Oh, yeah, a cold litvak. But I don't like the term, right? Because all litvaks are cold. But that criticism was saying that, yeah, very careful about every detail, but like, where's the neshama? So I think that that challenge, which is a fair challenge, is dealt with where? In the Torah. In the Torah. Of course, in the Torah, what does it say? What a Torah. What a Torah. Listen to this. So it says, Shmini Haftorah Shmuel base. Perg Vav and Zion. It's a long Haftorah. It's a long Haftorah. 
And what's he doing? And they took the Aaron. What's Rejoicing, schok, laughter. Yitzchak, schok, Sarah, Avram, laughing. And I'd say Roshim, Rosh. Anyone ever go to the Western Industrial Zone of Beit Shemesh? The police academy is there. If anyone wants to visit the police academy, and what is that area called? Brosh. Next time you get onto uh, thirty-eight, and you see you want to go to the Western Industrial Zone, Brosh. What is that name? Beautiful trees that are there, and that's what it's over here. At Sefer Roshim, we can own the volume of two pim. We're not in with self salim, and then all these musical instruments when David is bringing the Aaron back. Okay, then unfortunately, someone touched the Aaron he wasn't supposed to. That was a bit of a, a very big step back over there. And then, they more barred Baruch Hashem at Bay Ovid Adom, and the Aaron was a certain place, and he was blessed for that. They eat to the Saduno Seron Hashem Shisha Sadim is Bach Shumari, the Davin Mecha Ker Bachol O's with Nadanai, the Dava Chago Ephod Bad, and he was Mecha Ker, he was screaming out to Hashem. My limit are when they were bringing the Aaron up, the true Avako Shofar. David. It came to Ir David, right outside the old city area, close to the Makam Migdash area. Umichal. She's looking out the window. She's looking out the window. Nishkefa. She's looking. Ba'ad Hachalon. Batezmel David Fazez Umafakir. Livne Hashem. He's dancing like a child. But Tivez lo beliba, but tivez bizoi beliba. In her heart, like oh, the bizoi to the king, dancing like a little kid. By avoa et aron, by avia et aron, Hashem ve atzig davim kamo tocha oel. She natalo dava yal davra lo lefne Hashem. So David couldn't bring the couldn't have the migdash, but at least had the oel, the mishkan, and he brought the korban. He brought the aron there. He chal davim alot haolav v'sham ve'ach ta'am b'shem Hashem. He blessed Hashem. And he would give our presents, halat, to the people. So he blessed his uh, people, his home. And Micha Bashal came out. You're dancing like you're one of the Reikim. What's Reikim? Empty like a kid. What are you, like a baby? As I am, I am Misachik, I am playing. Who am I playing? In front of whom? Hashem. And Michal Bachaul, what happened to Michal Bachaul? No children, she was punished. Wow, wow, wow. So I'm wondering. So the obvious connection between the Parsha Shmini and Naftora, the obvious one is a dedication, is the dedication of the Migdash. You have in the Parsha, the Miluim, and you have what? And you have the Naftora. David bring it back. That's definitely one level of connection. I'm wondering if there's another connection. Because there's a big danger in the shot that I gave. That you see the danger of spirituality. So maybe you have to just be a cold, precise, mechanical Jew. Because that spiritual part can go ahead and steer us off the derech. So you have a whole half Torah dedicated to what? David singing like a baby. Very, very spiritual half Torah. 
to the point that he was so spiritual and so happy and so sameya to the point that Micha wants it. Adkan, what's going on? Too much. And he said, no, 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 no. In front of Hashem, this spirituality, this simcha, it's spot on. And obviously God paskin like whom? Like David, because, and, and Micha was punished for that. But the message is clear. The message is clear. So how do you go ahead and have the right spirituality and the happiness and the simcha and the dvekas and Hashem? How do you have it? You have the danger in Aparsha and you have the celebration in the So the answer is simple. How do you have proper spirituality? What? Within the law. First, you have the mind, the seichel, find out what the law is, either if you're a Talmud Chacham enough that you can investigate the lacha, then you investigate it yourself. Or if you're not at the level, then you go to the rabbi, the rabbis, to investigate the lacha, and you have your rabbi. And once that's the Psach Halacha, then you follow it with your mind, your body, your soul, everything. So it's just a question of the order. When the spirituality is deciding what to do, then we have Nadav and Aviyu. But when the halachic process is deciding what to do, and now that's the right action, then you're all in with every part of you. With every part of you. So I think it's a phenomenal, phenomenal parsha and haftorah. The synthesis is amazing. It's amazing. Yes, Julie. Doing something wrong also. Yes, even in the very, very, very good point. So it has to be analyzed what he did wrong, but obviously he did something wrong by touching the Aaron. It's like, what do you mean? What's he supposed to do? Just let it fall. So it's a good child, but for sure it's part of that. But luckily he wasn't supposed to touch it. He did, and he also paid for it. You're right. Very good point. Yes. How was the wife of David? The wife of David, the daughter of Shaul. Exactly. And he answered her that way. Your father, you know, I'm Melech because of your father and this is what a male should be doing there. So wasn't he sort of punished also because he would have had children with him? Wow, great question about because we are we say that when man punishes, when Basin punishes, all they can do is focus on the micro. He did this wrong, so we're gonna kill him. Yeah, but the whole family is affected by his punishment. And they say that when God punishes, he takes into account everyone. So it's a good question. It has to be worked out. Yeah, but the question is, he did the right thing, but the, for God, but you're saying when God's punishing horror, is taken away from him. So that's a good child. Nice question to look into. Yes. Yeah, it's a nice just something to look into. Something to look into. He had other women as well. They married other women in those days. So he can't have from Obi, he can't have from others. It's a nice question. It's a good question. I always like celebrating a good question and offering a quick answer, which may or may not be accurate. That's a nice question. Something to look into. So, so then that might be the answer. It might be the answer that he had other wives and, and sometimes he didn't have such models with his sons. So it might not have been a bracha with his situation. It could be. It could be. Huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. Correct. So definitely, what, that's a good question needs to be looked into. So the punishment for her, God decided that's right, but how does that affect Dove too? It's a nice shine. So just to finish off, I brought in a biography. There's a lot of biographies on the Vilna Gone. And in the, this is one of the many back in chapter nine. You want to guess what chapter that's about? His major argument with Hasidim. And I'm wondering if that is connected to our parsha, that argument. Now, what does it say? He says that you had 70, 1760, okay, uh, Baal passed away, late 1700s. And you had the Hasidic movement going strong. You had a century before that Shabtai Tzvi. It was a, the, it was, the Jews were reeling. It was a hard time. And then all of a sudden you had the popularity of whom? Of the Hasidim spreading like wildfire. Okay. So they had their own kind of davening. And then in response to the dismal situation, the Baal Shem Tov initiated a movement that sought to revive the spirit of the Jewish people through joy, prayer, yearning for Hashem and song. This was Hasidism. And those are all beautiful concepts. Aren't they all beautiful concepts? Joy, prayer, yearning for Hashem, Shira, take us. And that's great. Obviously, the Vilna Gon and all the people that were concerned 
who are wondering, I think, I don't want to just give a, a superficial summary to such a huge argument, but I'm wondering if I could put it succinctly, they were concerned that all this spirituality is going to be leading the way and the order is off. And an example that they gave was all this spiritual yearning and connecting to Hashem through Tzvila, very nice. But what is our indication that their order is off? You have to have halacha, then spirituality, not spirituality affecting the halacha, right? And when were they davening? Late. Late, whenever they felt like. And their times of davening is so precise in halacha, one minute you're off, that's a problem. You see the sun goes down. I didn't say minuch yet. Uh-oh, might be just forget about it. Just do two marks. Everything's precise, right? And you can say Shema till 9.37 in the morning, let's say, this month. And you do 9.38. But I said Shema with such kavana. Very nice. He didn't do Shema, though. He said the Pesuk of Shema. You don't have to miss the Shema. You miss it by 31.36 seconds. It's precise, the system. So to put it, but this is superficial for me to make that the whole argument. But one element of the argument by Shem Tov Hasidim was all your spirituality is wonderful, but we're getting a little bit nervous that what? The spirituality is leading the way of the halachic process and not the other way around. So you're focusing so much on spirituality, not focusing enough on the learning. So much spirituality, you're dominating at times. There was even some groups that were flipping during dominating, which is flipping out of the excitement to be near Hashem. I remember in the middle of Esrei, flipping. Like well, so the concern was that the Nadav and Avihu, the way I'm looking at it, as I said, there's books and books of books, so I don't want to in any way trivialize the Machlokas. It was a huge argument. The beginning of Chabad Judaism. He wrote the Shulchan Acharav, and he wrote the Balatanya, two major works till this day in Halacha and philosophy. And he came to talk with Vilnagon, and the Vilnagon, what did he do? Didn't meet with him. Didn't meet with him. And he was no slouch. He was a gadol. A gadol who called to Akula. And uh, let's talk it over. Which sounds like a normal thing to do. No, we're going said not for the reason. It's so big, the arguments. I don't want to trivialize it, but maybe there's just one aspect of the Hasidim, Misnagdim argument that could be connected to our parasha. Namely, to summarize, is that. No, so we have all the examples of the Bashvisha, Shani Shlishi, everything is great. We have the fire coming from Hashem, eating up the Kabanas, it's great. Then, the beginning of Shlishi, not of you come along. They bring Azar Shalotzi of Hashem, that God didn't come in. Don came in, so they wiped out. Ah, so what's the answer? That you can imagine they were glowing, spirituality just oozing from them, and it was all nice and beautiful, but it wasn't guided by Halacha. Spirituality was guiding that, and that was the order was off. So that cannot be that way. So then we said the danger of that is what? That you're going to be a cold Jew, mechanical Jew. That's it. Just follow halacha, learn the halacha with the sugya with my mind, very cerebral, and follow. And that's a danger because God wants our lay and our spirituality. So maybe that's why the haftorah comes along. And what do we see? And then Michal says, what's going on? That's not appropriate. Now, I don't know where Michal's coming from. She thinks it's not appropriate for anyone that way, or maybe specifically not for whom? The king. So maybe she's fine with dancing and seeing that. The king, you know. But no, she made a mistake. And for whatever reason, she was that has to be looked into a bunch of So Devin says, no, this is appropriate. This is very appropriate. And he was, of course, deemed right. And it could be that a few thousand years later with the Hasidic and the Gra argument, where they were looking for spirituality, and it was so needed. The Jews were so downtrodden and, and, and all the massacres and, and the um, Shab Tzvi. They were called, they were down, they were out, not able to learn and be coming to Chachamim. So I mean, you're nothing. So Hashem brought them, no davening and singing and, and bring the spirituality out, which is beautiful. So the Gra just refused. We don't know exactly why. It's it's major, major study. I'm just reading a, a quote from one of the many biographies that, you know, maybe they're just concerned, davening, what's going on with this, with that, and the order is off. Spirituality is coming before the Allah, and it can never be that way. Either way, 20 years later, 2024, you don't really have this argument going on anymore. You have so many yeshivas where they have tishes, and they have singing, and you have so many great Hasidic dynasties where the learning is on a very, very high level. 
Yeah, Rav Asher Weiss to me, the Godol Hador. Praise Rav Asher Weiss. He's Godol Hador, Hasidish, a Talmud of whom? The Klosenberger Rebbe, who lost everyone in the Holocaust, but continued on and taught Rav Asher Weiss. He was close with Rav Asher Weiss's father in the concentration camps. It's an unbelievable story. Rav Asher Weiss, everyone goes to him. And he's Hasidish, Klosenberg, and everyone. Tatilumi, Hasidish, Yeshivish, Godol Hador. Okay, and the synthesis bar Hashem is there. Where uh, how many shivas today? You know, are gonna, we don't have any singing any of that. It's not true. You can have your tishes. You can have your closest with the rebbe, and that's the synthesis. That is the ruchlius and the halacha combined beautifully. To me, I was laughing because when Rav Chaim died, when Rav Chaim died a few years ago, Rav Chaim Kanievsky, I was <laughs> laughing when I was listening to the rebbe's talking about all the mofsin, the miracles of whom? Of Chayim. And here you're coming from this Misnagdash and Misorah. He's Hasid and they talk about their rabies and all the miracles they do. I'm like, he's a hero worship. You guys are like nuts. You think your rabies a miracle work? He's this. Oh, these Hasid, what are they doing? <laughs> and, and the ultimate Hasid that Shavavi was whom? Of Chayim Kanevsky. <laughs> and oh, yeah, I, I was at Rebbe and I didn't even ask my question. He already answered it. And he's real Hakodesh. And fine, that's great. But there's a synthesis. What does all this show? The synthesis of the two worlds the halachic world, the Lithuanian world of high level scholarship and learning and Gemara together with what? The Simcha and, and, and the Tishes and, and, and the Islamist and spirituality. So I think for this Pasha till today is a beautiful, beautiful development. It should just continue. And we can have that synthesis come together in a proper way. Okay. And my pleasure. We should just be well.